Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is a demonstration of my painting, Giving Way to Spring. This composition took place from a beautiful park walk at Larimer Park in Abington, Pennsylvania. It was late winter, the temperature soared, and we decided to take a walk in a park, even though the ground was snow covered. In the brilliant sunshine, we ended up shedding our hats and our gloves and opening our coats and just enjoying this beautiful walk very, very much. And I'm so glad we went. I hope you enjoyed my demonstration. And give it a thumbs up if you do. Now let's paint. That had been used for something else and was not successful. So when I'm working on paper that I don't really care very much about, I often feel more free to do whatever it strikes me as right. I'm starting with a sketch of a winter scene a photograph I took a while ago while I was taking a really nice walk in a park on a warm day filled with snow. My sketch is fairly simple, laying out the roadway or path, laying out the stream bed that goes through, and then the hillsides in the background. I sprayed the paper with water to keep a light and dotty sort of approach and touch in with the blue sky in the far background. This is a mixture of cobalt blue and turquoise blue. The sky had considerably more light on the left side, including some rays that came through of sunlight. So I was thinking about some different ways to approach those rays of sunlight to preserve the whites Meanwhile, I start with the far background, and since it's so wet, I know it will blur out and lighten in color. I'm laying out the suggestion of trees in the background, the suggestion of snow-covered hillsides in the background, and the sky. All very wet on wet. I often use splattering with my paintbrush and just splatter, splatter, splatter drops in so they go in randomly and tend to look more natural. Here I'm laying in some bushes that are in the middle ground. I look very closely at the colors in my photograph and I can see subtle suggestions of pinks mauves, mustard colors, and sagey green colors. So I play up those subtle colors and make them just a little more enhanced than they actually are. And I do know they will fade out and be lighter. And then I start to lay in some distant tree lines, some trunks, knowing also that they will fade out. I'm painting very loosely at this point. So there is a far slope, then there's a slightly co closer slope, and then we get into the midground, which is around where the stream is and the bushes. Right now I'm painting around where the rays of sun are coming through. And I'm going to decide how, how I'm going to handle that area probably a little later on. This is just a blurry background layout. Here I'm coming in with some snow colors, some cobalt blue and some purple. I'm laying in some tree trunk lines that will go along the road by the stream. And I'm just giving myself markers at this point. Now I've taken some tape. Everything's dry and I'm putting on some masking tape. I'm thinking maybe I'll mask lines in just to keep that area sort of blocked out. And then I can come back 
and blend it and make it look more natural at some point in the future. But I will preserve some whites there. I've also decided that I want to preserve some of the strong orangey tan color of the leaves that are still hanging on to the trees at this point in the winter. I believe they are either oak leaves or beech tree leaves. So I'm using masking to preserve that and once it's dry then I'll start in on my darker colors. At this point I'm marking out where I'm going to put the stream. The stream was quite dark in this particular light. In fact, anything that was wet, like all the tree trunks, were quite dark. I wanted to start on a smaller piece of paper, such as this 10 inches by 8 inches. So I could try to complete my thought quickly and as spontaneously as I could. I'm using a mixture of dark blues here, including Prussian blue and indigo blue with a little bit of Payne's gray. The water is not all one color because there are areas of foam going through. There are areas that are slightly frozen. So I'm being careful to leave lighter areas and darker areas. And in some areas the color changed entirely and I used cobalt blue. But it was one of the dark accents that went through the painting and gave it some good strong dark interest for accenting. And once the stream bed is laid in, I can then pull in the trees that are going around the stream bed. Since the tape is laid onto the paper, I can paint right over it without worrying that I'm going to mess up a plan for the future. Now one of the trees in my picture is considerably lighter. I think perhaps the tree is not in good shape, but it was almost a grayish tan. So I'm working hard to show that coloring because it's in the foreground and I don't want to make it real dark like everything else, but I also don't want to make it not seen at all. So I'm trying to bring out the texture that was actually in the tree. The trees in the middle ground and further back should be lighter in color according to what I think. The trees in the foreground should be darker in color. But additionally, all the trees in this little woods are not the same color. Some were more brown, some were more gray, some appeared almost black, although I was not using black in this composition. There were also several trees that had been downed and were laying across the stream or next to the stream. And the sunbeam went right through a whole section of the forest. So I blocked it off and figured I'll figure it out as I go. And now it's a matter of choosing which trees I want to put in, marking where they'll go, and then slowly building them up to the intensity of color that I want. As I said before, 
I'm looking at a reference photo and there are hundreds, likely hundreds of trees in this photo. I don't want to paint everyone and I don't want everyone to be as dark. Some should be lighter, some should be darker, and I'm trying to set up a lively pattern or rhythm across the compositional surface. If I painted every tree, it would just get too busy. And yet I have to paint enough trees to make it look like it is a forest. I vis revisit the background, the far background, a number of times because it was obvious from the photograph that there was quite a line of trees back there. So I couldn't let it be so light. And I will be going back to that again. Now I am having fun putting in some s snowy slope colors with the purples and the ultramarine blues and even some turquoise to mirror the turquoise in the sky. The burnt sienna and the pinks are coming in to suggest the lively colors that remain in the bushes, even though it's winter time, or perhaps the reawakening of some of the bushes as springtime begins to move in. In this particular composition, there are two signs that people have been through here. One of them is some posts that were driven in next to the stream along the road. I'm assuming to maybe keep cars from going into the road or snowmobiles, whatever is traveling on this road. The other one is the road itself and some marks that someone has passed that way in some kind of vehicle, whether it's a ATV or a Jeep or a park ranger or somebody riding a snowmobile. So there's tracks or tire marks. And I have to admit that was one of the things I was really looking forward to painting because shadows on snow are just a lot of fun to me. Painting a shadow on a hillside that goes down over a road and then down a slope really is a fun challenge. I'm using mostly ultramarine blue to paint these shadows to start. And they have to be both bright enough to show and soft enough at the edge to look like shadows. So I'm getting a feeling here for where the the, sh the uh, snow has been pushed aside in the road. And then I'm jumping to the background where I've decided to make the distant slopes darker to make them stand out and be more distinctive from each other. Along each top of slope is a line of bushes and that's where I'm darkening the color. And now I'm painting more distant trees into the background.
And the feeling of forest is beginning to fill in now. Give me a little bit more of the look I'm looking for. Although I still have a ways to go on that. I have about all the trees now marked in where I want them. It will be a matter of darkening the ones that need to be darkened. Some of them I will darken on the right side and keep the left side lighter since that is my side of my light source. And adding another fallen log. Working on the middle ground bank. Putting in some slope marks. And now I'm oh so slowly marking out where my tire marks will be. I'm starting out fairly light. But I want them to be right because they have to go around the corner. They have to both come together and get closer as they move back in space. And go in the right direction at the same time. Working on the shadows going around the corner and then the other foreground shadows. The tree shadows have to travel down the hill, up over a little bump, and then over two more bumps of tire marks. At this point I decide to take off the masking tape and start to work around the very clumsy rays of light and make them more incorporated into the painting. I'm softening all of the edges with a damp brush and blotting. So I want to blur my edges because I don't want these rays of light to look harsh or hard. I want them to be very, very soft. And then I'll have to bring the colors back through them selectively where I want them to show. I'm working fairly wet here so it, I can keep everything sort of blurry. I'm putting in various colors through the rays. Some cobalt blue, a little bit of turquoise, some pink, some burnt sienna, and then continuing to soften around the edges. Once the edges are softened to my satisfaction, I'm bringing in the tree trunk seen through the light. But since everything is fairly wet on wet, they're coming in lighter. I want them to show, but I don't want them to be as bright as where there's no rays. So it's a matter of dancing between the sunbeams, basically. Making them soft enough to look like sunbeams and yet let the, the scene show through. And then I decided I would bring some of that very turquoise sky color into the foreground shadows just so I would have a continuity of color. Because if you put a strong painting in one color of a composition you generally want to put it elsewhere as well. It doesn't need to be everywhere, but in order to make the eye transfer and look around the painting in a logical manner, you want to use that color elsewhere as well. Maybe you could see why I enjoy painting shadows so much. The colors are so pretty in the wintertime on snow. And the directionality is so essential to this particular painting. 
and such a fun challenge to get it right. If you look closely at your reference photograph, that's your best chance to get it just the way it's supposed to be, at least to your eye or your satisfaction. Going back and darkening some areas of the water as well. At this point, I'm painting between trees. It takes a little more time, but sometimes it's necessary. Because I'm not using black when I paint my trees. It seems that I have to glaze them a number of times to get the color dark enough where they're supposed to be dark. And for many of my dark areas, I am using a mixture of indigo blue and Van Dyke brown. When you look at a tree in a photograph or a reference, they are not the same color from top to bottom. Generally speaking, where the light hits them changes the coloring and the lightness and the value. So look at your reference photo. If you get the variety of color going through the tree, it's going to look more natural. Where the sunlight is really strongly hitting the trees, I'm using some more burnt sienna. And that suggests very strong light hitting a dark surface. I had some fairly strong areas of pink, which was permanent rose in this case. And just about the middle of the painting, I decided to bring some more pink into the foreground, more subtly. And then I brought some into the right side as well, so there wasn't only pink in one area. Each day when I complete my painting day, I make notes for myself. I get my painting off at a distance, look across the room at it, and make notes. I will say, needs more pink, needs more shadowing in this area, needs more background shadowing, bring out this foreground tree more, and I'll make notes to myself as to what I want to do the next day when I start to paint again. These notes really help me a lot. And you'll see my reference notes as you see me painting. Working a little bit more with the sunbeam areas. And I'm starting to feel like I can walk into the picture. If I can paint a picture of the place where I actually was, and get a little memory of what it was like there that day, then I'm very satisfied with what I've accomplished. Because that's what I'm trying to show my viewers. Is what it felt like to actually be there. Getting toward the end, I'm removing all the masking fluid I had put down. And that was for the purpose of preserving some light areas to put in some of the remaining leaves that were clinging onto the trees. And if you've walked through the woods in the winter or the late fall, 
and you've seen these trees that do keep their leaves for a longer time period. They're sort of one of the few colors in the winter landscape. They're a drab yellow ochre color or a light burnt sienna color. So I'm adjusting and making the tweaks on the slopes and other notes that I made for myself the day before. And then I will come in and put in those stronger leaf colors in the areas I just took the masking from. And here come some pinks, moving into a few areas outside of the middle. A little more turquoise as well to carry the sky color down. And a few twigs and little tiny trees that are just beginning to come up through the snow. Another layer of darkness to make those foreground trees stand out. And then I'm pulling out my yellows and my yellow ochres, along with a little bit of light burnt sienna to put those leaves onto my masked out areas. I put the color on rather intense, and yet it seemed to keep fading on me, so I probably did it probably about three times over. I wanted those colors to come through and add to the color in the general winter composition. Final tweaks. and softening the snowbank on the right side above the water. And I'm doing that with a damp brush. Here comes my signature and I'll be done. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed my video of giving way to spring. I hope you'll give it a like and a thumbs up and you can subscribe below. If you ring the bell, you won't miss the next one. Also in links below, you can see some of the products I use to create my paintings as well as my Facebook art page link and a link to my blog. Additionally, there are some products that I have for sale. I'll see you next painting.